Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 262 of my modded Vectoria playthrough. On this episode, we're going to work on aluminum and zinc ingots, as well as expanding our glycerol production. Enjoy. The last thing we worked on was silver. So what is next on our list of ingots? Well, we can check to see what the next belt is. And unfortunately, it did have to do a bit of a zigzag there, but uh, at least the order of the belts... It looks like aluminum. I think zinc was probably first. But uh, the aluminum belt would have less distance to travel. So let's do aluminum. And as far as the numbers, well, it starts the same as the rest of them. So we'll just place it in here. Then it goes through three sets of five of these powder mixers because each one will create one belt of output. So it'll have two belts for each of its inputs. I kind of want to make one now so we can see what kind of input and output we need. Yellow for the inputs and it might be right on the border for a red inserter for the output. So let's just do a stack. Although we do need some space in here. Well, kind of. It's like we need some space, but I think those will reach just fine. Then we have inputs and outputs for each. Knowing that, let's move it. Just kind of put it there. I guess it doesn't actually need to be the reds. And then it's going to need its sodium hydroxide as well. Which is kind of in the way there. Something like that. Of course, we got to copy these to each one. And then they only go into three machines. And then three machines again. So I'm kind of thinking sort of something like this, but done slightly differently. Let's just copy it for now. So the input can come in through the side. And actually, these can be here as well. Set that to making alumina. And this to making the ingots. The alumina just needs a little bit for fuel. The ingots do need a significant amount of the carbon, but it's basically still just one inserter's worth. So we can insert it there. And then we just need to move the full output across here. And we can have long handed ones right in the middle and have that jump over all of them. And it's a little kind of lopsided to do it like this and then have the belts just go across again but that would reuse the existing belts without too much pain and suffering and I think this will work and get everything connected where the three belts go in each one handles one belt pushes the resources across and then back to where they need to go so I think that does it but we should pick it up and make it in line with another setup and push it over a few squares so it's not right on there kinda do the same thing for this but Space it out, because why not? Right. The truck is right in the way. <laughs> Just crash through stuff, it's fine. Let's see, that does look uh, a little close. So about how much space do we want to fill in here? Or I think it was 11 squares. So kind of like that. And this one then kind of gets lined up. And this isn't exactly the edge of it, but... We might as well use it. Get every output lined up. As well as the sodium hydroxide, which actually should be... red here. And as always, got to expand the robots. And give it its warehouse. Kinda wanna grab some belts. 
so we can get the logic figured out. So this one is aluminum, and so are these. We need a yellow belt of fuel. Guess we'll just leave it unhooked for now so we can test it all in a bit. But we're going to need more space. So factory bots and crawler bots can help each other. How is ammo doing? Well, starting to make the shells again. And waiting on that cordite. It's not being made because of glycerol. And that's because of lack of nutrient pulp. Probably because it was all going to making the acid components, which it's now going to slowly start running out of. And it looks like it is dumping the fuel. It's being processed as fast as it can. But I think we could make this a little faster. Let's get this stuff upgraded. So how is the raw vegetable oil doing now? Seems like at the maximum. That this was set up for based on the number of uh, belts. It kind of is belt limited, so that's all we can really do. But that means now that it's uh, running at full speed. Can't take a productivity module. Neither can those. But it is pumping up nutrient pulp. Which I imagine is finding its way down here. Which is fine, it needs to uh, max out on hydrogen sulfide here. And then when it does, the process is going to start backing up. Like it's going to back up on acid gas. And or the puffers output themselves. Either way, the effect is the same. It's going to stop consuming resources. So if we are going to be building nutrient bulb, it should be happening now. And it doesn't seem like it. Of course, we are making a, a bunch of explosives. So when this finally stops, it will eventually catch up. I don't know if it's a critical problem right now. I guess it depends on the status of the ammo. Like, that one is full. That one is full. And that one is full. So I suppose it's not a big problem right now. Because... Making the artillery shells consumes a ton of sulfur, so once that stops, it should all kind of balance out again. That's my hope here. <laughs> Lots of orbs to collect. The biters are just chilling, making their home on the paved section now. And the biter orbs are being burned away. That's basically the factory's sole source of power. Are we collecting them, or are they disappearing? Okay, they are disappearing. Where they're out of these... And now this warehouse is going down, so eventually we will burn through them. Also, gold and titanium have been slowly creeping up, and the reason why they're at that point is because lead is also at 15, because it's a fairly low level. So now, anytime any ores need to be made from the crystallizer, they're kind of bonking between making lead, making titanium, and making gold. Which is fine. But, uh, let's see, hopefully... This aluminum setup is ready to rock and roll. So that is set. Also kind of got to clear out these trees as well. They're almost certainly going to be in the way. Let's see, we have an invisible belt here. So let's kind of do the same thing. Okay, aluminum's in here. Making processed aluminum. And then getting distributed. It should basically be full belts. Although, I don't think we need to have two inserters on the bottom here. And then in goes carbon, which is both a fuel and the input resource. Making the warehouse of aluminum ingots. Filling up pretty fast and full. 
Okay. That much is good. Time for the next one. Which I believe the last legacy resource of the original build was zinc. So let's hit that and then we've got the three new ones to make. Well, zinc is super easy. You just process the ore and then put it into a chemical furnace. Well, the other setups used 11 spaces here, so I believe that would be the 11. Yep. So you plop it in there. And then basically that one belt will go in a straight line until it gets all the way up here and is lined up with the other machines. And it looks like we finally have to start tearing away some of that right there. And we're doing five units, but we might as well do six. And in fact, something like what we've already built here ought to work pretty well. Like right here. It does have an input of 30. So that's making zinc. That all needs to be red. Then a second one on this side. Should do exactly the same thing. So I guess we can put them like this. And then the output is three times as high as the input. So three inserters. Which it already has. So this much gets copied. And I think that'll do it. Of course, all of the gases still have to be hooked up. It's going to be pretty much the same thing as this. With its warehouse. Set to zinc. The oxygen is on the outside. And it should make use of the oxygen being generated wherever. This is the nearby location, so we should get most of it from right there. And the sulfur dioxide gas, which it will send down to get processed at sulfur. Okay, processing, which is the last tier two thing that we need to process. Although cobalt oxide is there as something we need to do, but it's only tier one. And we need two belts of it. That should be the next one ready to go. Might as well clear out the rest of these trees. Because they're almost certainly going to be in some sort of way. And hey, look at that nutrient pulp built back up. So it's now being turned into glycerol again. And this is slowly running. We probably want to have a better way of doing glycerol. But besides that, we really can only go down this chain here, which requires hydrochloric acid. And then we have to synthesize it from chlorine and propene, which chlorine is fine, but propene isn't something we're necessarily making a ton of. Although I suppose we could take it from plastics because that is in the nearby area. So I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be that bad of an idea. So glycerol liquid here, and how much do we want to make? I don't know. Maybe just based on whatever this requires. So only 36, that doesn't sound like very much. It is not. So we make this from its recipe. Sodium hydroxide would be nearby-ish, but it also could be sent by on a drone. Hydrochloric acid the same way. And that from propene and chlorine. And in fact, a lot of this could probably just be built where the chlorine setup actually is. And just send the propene up there. That'd probably be a lot easier. Because we already are going to have that propene elsewhere. So let's see, is this correct? Chlorine, yes. Propene, yes. Hydrochloric acid, yes. And a little bit of that other stuff, yes. It would create hydrogen chloride, which in itself is a byproduct. I'm not sure. Hey, an actual train is moving. Oh, that's the uh, explosives. 
I'm not sure if we'd be overloaded on it. Well, right here we are. That actually could be a problem. But yeah, I kind of want to do that just to uh, keep the ammo flowing. Anyway, we should have enough to test zinc now. It has a very long belt up here. And it looks like there's still some speed modules which need to be in there. But all of these should about make 90. And they do. Of course, it fills up very fast, as it always does. Okay, well, before we start working on the other ores, I kind of want to just try to buff up the glycerol. Because we went through all that effort of making sulfur, so that would kind of suck if uh, we still didn't have the ammo. Especially because it looks like it really doesn't take that much effort to make it. I was worried that the propene would be a result of processing oil, but uh, I think this setup will work. We just need to grab the propene gas from down here. And it looks like it's already being sent somewhere else. So where is it going? Ah, it's being burned. But I think right now we're using a great deal of it to uh, make plastic. Yeah, but um, we're actually not that far from having the set point reached. But I think it's worth doing anyway. It's just not that big of a setup. And we can kind of steal the water from these other things. So let's just uh, do this. And let's just handcraft a few of these because we can. The water comes in. Our glycerol liquid would come out. That moves over, and then we need the acid, which is conveniently right up here. Although this needs to be flipped the other way to line up properly here. So unfortunately it's not quite as nice as I was hoping it would be. But that can go around there. This skips across propane needs to go in there. Then the chlorine. Can go in. And then maybe set this. Says it's if it's under 40,000. So that makes me think that something has already been dumping into the system. But I'm not sure what. Ah. So that's going to max it out all of the time. We can put this here. If it's under 80%, it is allowed to turn on. And basically have another one right here and another pump. But if it's over 16,000, this one turns on to a flare stack. Although those can't be connected. There we go. Of course, it's not running anymore, so it's fine. But that should make sure there's room in that pipe. This glycerol isn't going to make very much hydrogen chloride gas, but it will make some. And we need to hook up here. Let's just space this out a bit. With a no return valve. So it only goes that direction. And then an overflow. So it gets dumped if there's too much. Okay, so that needs the input of the propene gas, which is right here, and it's got its other stuff. And its outputs are taken care of. It goes into this one, which needs sodium hydroxide, and then it's good. And then this one is also good for its output. So, sodium hydroxide, well we've got some up there, or we can send it from over here. And four per second is a small amount, so we can kind of 
get it in here however we can. It's going to be kind of funny doing it like this, but it works. Although it might work slightly better doing that. So that's going to get in there. So propane. I guess just send it along here. And whatever the first available line is, looks like it's the one on the end. I would like to have a pump here to try to give it priority to this direction. And we'll put a tank in there to be extra sure. And as far as crossing over, I think we can do it from right here. Yes. And there we go, it's connected, there's not much of it. There is enough. And it's quickly going through the process. Giving us our glycerol liquid. I could go straight down across all these farms, but it's probably more appropriate to just come back to this pipe bus. Although in this section it's kind of busy. But it needs to come through here and that pipe reaches the entire way, which is awesome. So it'll require a little bit of a zigzag, but it can go in there. So it should be connected now. And it probably is, because it got all sucked out. So this is making the glycerol the best we can. There's just not much propane available. It's eking along. Seems like this is going. Is it just, uh... Yeah. A lack of stone. This is a situation where grinding up slag would help, where we turn the slag into mineralized water to thus make our plastic. We use mineralized water for quite a bit. It's a surprisingly useful resource, considering it's just wastewater. So grinding slag for the purposes of making slurry is a bad idea, because the slag is just better. But the only thing that can make mineralized water is the crushed stone, or the various purification methods, or cleaning electrodes. And that's it. That's the only way to make it. So I would say these should turn on. Basically, if this is low, and if this is low. So we need two conditions. But one of them can be for the stone, and this other one, the green wire, can come here to mineralize water. So mineralized water has to be less than probably like 4,000. I'm not sure what all this stuff is set to. Let's try 4,000 for now. So if so, it gets a green square. And this other one is just looking at the crush stone of the warehouse. And if it's below like 200, we want just enough in there for the process to start. Then we connect these. Requires exactly two green squares. And it's getting them. So these can be hooked up. So there's our mineralized water being made again. And because of sloshing and whatnot, this is going to get to about 20% and stop. And then this thing is just inching along. Looking good there. So let's go back and see if our algae production is going at full tilt again. Well it certainly looks like it with all the inserters swinging. But because of sloshing it doesn't get very far. And this is looking for either of these conditions to be true. Water is high or propane is low and it turns them on, which is the case. Propene is low. Well, we filled up on there, so now it's just making the propene, which shouldn't be getting burned or anything. It's not. It's just taking a little while for all this to get filled up. But they're all basically working as fast as they can. The thing about growing anything with farms or puffers or anything is it always takes a lot of space to make it happen. It's kind of the disadvantage is they're just not as fast as the uh, destructive way of making these. But it fills up. 
Now all of the propane output is going down the pipe. But as this level gets higher, it's going to put more and more into this. And this is the tank which controls the propane level. So that's looking good. And now our setup seems like it's running at full speed, at least as it could. Because one of these machines is always going to be a limiting factor. Actually, it looks like it's just the inserter. So I think we have this set to just make it as fast as we need it, but we can make it faster. And that thing is definitely catching up. There we go. It's using all of the propane. It's pushing it through, making glycerol liquid. And that glycerol liquid is being pushed down. Trying to make the nitroglycerin. It is building up. It's just, I think these things are basically perfectly sized. And they are, because these are all maxed out, so... We're making it as fast as we can. And the great thing is uh, it leaves more nutrient pulp on hand for our puffers. And they have caught up as well. So this is all looking great. So now we just have the new ingot types. Finally, after going through all of that. But uh, now we just need to do cobalt, gold, titanium, and also the steel and get that lined up. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.